Uh, hello everyone. I'm Darren, but today I'm not from Novastar. I'm a customer. Hello everyone. I'm Simon, and I'm from Novastar. I'm not a customer. Okay, Simon. I heard that Novastar recently released some new product. Is、mm -hmm. that so? Yeah. And what is it? Okay, so recently we've been working on a new series of products, namely the H series. So it's a brand new video splicing processor, and it's way more powerful than any other splicer that's ever existed in Novastar's history. We call it our flagship product. Okay, Simon,、uh, could you please give us a short introduction about the H series? Of course. So today I'm going to talk about why the H series is developed. And what the H series is capable of when it comes to large resolution, and then I will also talk a little bit about different types, different models of the H series, which is gonna help you find your ideal product as quickly as possible. And at last, I will also cite two real cases. But before we start, Darren, I want to give you a situation, in which you are supposed to tell me how you usually do the configuration for the whole system in a traditional way. So as you all know.、Uh, With the development of the manufacturing techniques in the LED industry, the pixel pitch is nowadays going all the way down, correct? Which enables a larger screen with higher resolution. This is great. Yeah. But it also makes more functional requirements for our video controllers and also for our video processors like splicers and so on. Yeah. So in this case, how do you configure the whole system if you got like an 8K screen? Okay. Thanks for your questions. Uh、mm、huh. -hmm. I'm just feel feel like I'm taking the college entry examination. Uh, currently, for 4K、uh, project, the 4K resolution is still popular and、uh, is more common on on this market. But there is no denying that the 8K resolution is become is increasing now.、Hmm. And for the 4K project, we may use a one piece of 4K sending card, or we can use、uh, a 4K video splicer and together with four pieces 1080P level sending card. Now, if we face a 8K screen, we need four times the amount, and which means we need 16 pieces. 1080p level sending controllers, and it requires a video splicer which can support 16 channels outputs for providing video source for each sending controller. And in the front, we may have multiple video source input. And this is the on-set situation. There are too many cables, Ethernet cables, DVI cables, USB cables, etc. And the cable is killing me. And as you know, the more devices and more cables will make the cable wearing more complex. And could increase the error rate of the whole system, and we may face a video tearing issue between several outputs of the video splicer, and more devices for sure will cause high latency. And with the layer configuration, we also have too many limitations. So whenever I think about this situation, I got a headache. Is your new product each series can help with it? Well, I know how it feels, mate. That sounds literally、yeah. suffering, but don't worry. That's why we're here with our H series. It can solve all of the problems talked about. For example, if you go with the previous solution, you are gonna need 16 pieces of 660 or 600. Exactly. Plus one more video splicer right before them. But with H9, things get way easier. One mere piece of H9 engaged or 660 replaced, and no more splicer needed. Wow, that's amazing! You can't imagine how many screws I screwed and how many wires I connected on site. It was a disaster. Well, speaking of the cable wiring, maybe you should check this out, Darren. Okay. Once H9 in, up to 80% of the on-site cables are gone. True. I mean, like, think about it, man. No one ever wanna see sin wind up in a mess. I think you prefer the one on the right as well, Andrew. Yes, exactly. And this is looks so neat, and I believe everyone doesn't want to be trapped in the control room because of the messy wiring and too much equipment. Okay, Simon, could you please tell us more about it? Of course, this is what I'm trying to say is a product benefit number one, highly integrated. Let's take a closer look at,、uh, for example, H9 together. Okay. This block is like a bomb. Wow. It has both 4K splicer and 4K sending card integrated. Ten channels of 4K inputs are equivalently 40 channels of 2K inputs are allowed at the same time. Ten 4K or 42K inputs, seriously? Exactly. You haven't heard it wrong, and I think it's really practical that the type of your video feeds may vary from analog signals like VGA or CVBS to digital signals like SDI, DVI, HDMI, and so on. And as for output performance, I think you've already formed a perceptual connection. That it is capable of loading an 8K display, but the thing is, it can do way more. 
in fact, it can even load up to 65 million pixels in total. 65 million pixels. Mm -hmm. At 8K screen, the total resolution is around 33 million pixels. Exactly, 65 million pixels. Okay, so I think the input and output is totally enough for the current project. Yep. And now let's move on to the next part. Darren, I think you must have bumped into some situations when you got to open up several layers and put in different video sources, right? Yes, of course, yeah. Nice. So here comes the benefit to flexible layer setting. Each of our sending daughter card on the H9 supports 16 2K layers, or equivalently four 4K layers. Each layer is able to go full screen. Okay, so each daughter card supports 16 layers. So totally H9 supports 80 layers. Well, that's cool. Yep. And um, benefit three, perfect synchronization. Darren, I'm just wondering which lady on the screen you want to go with. The left one? Oh, no, definitely the right one. The image on the left is being torn. And this is caused by the synchronization issue between different output of the splicer and the sending controller. So can each series fix this? No doubt about it. So you see, after using H9, the beautiful lady doesn't even need to worry anymore that her attractive face may be torn into pieces on the display. Wow, that's fantastic. Yeah. And benefit four, low latency. In this picture, you can know how important a system with low latency is for the performances. Where the system latency is high as the one on the left, the audience wouldn't manage to see the real-time motion of the go. When it comes to low latency, the H-series solution outperforms the traditional ones by two to three frames, which is going to give our customer a better user experience. Wow. And now let's make a little bit of summary of what was regarded as headache problems. Okay. So too much equipment with complex wiring, down. Too many limitations on layers configuration, down. Tearing issues, down. And finally, high latency with poor visual experience also down. Well, perfect. So Darren, how do you like our H-series now? Well, I think now you make me more interested in your H-series. So is that all for H-series? No. Uh, yeah, no. I, I don't think so. So any other good features? Because I think everybody, including me, we want to know why we choose H-series and why we choose your Nova Star. Well, those are only basic features. And in fact, we got something more advanced, I'll tell you. Okay, can't wait. Let's dive into this part. Okay, so basically, as you can see from this page, the H series also provides web page control, seamless switching, HDR, 3D input and output monitoring, as well as EDID. Let's go through them one by one. First of all, let's have a look at this so called web page control. It's actually a software developed on the basis of the BS structure, the browser service. So it doesn't matter whatever the terminal platform you are using, whether it's on an Android phone, on an iPad, or on a computer. As long as you can open a browser, the H9 is right in the palm of the hand. Okay, I think this design is really convenient because we can, car we can carry the computer all the time. And for traditional software design, we need to download it from the website first, yeah. and we need to install it on our laptop. But now, as long as the device can open browser and we just enter the app address and we can control the software directly. So this is pretty good. Yes. And another useful function is up to 2000 presets can be stored on edge series by which fade in and fade out with seamless switching are supported. You see it again? How many? I think 200 presets are enough to meet my requirements. Now it's 2000. That's incredible. Two, man. Yeah. But that's still in a way. So HDR and 3D also work perfectly with H-series. And this matters because more and more attention has been paid to improve the image quality. Color depth, color gamut, brightness, you name it. These are nowadays no longer strange nouns to us, aren't they? It's not hard to understand. Better image quality provides us with yeah. better visual experience through yes. details. And besides that, 3D is also gaining its popularity among some projects with its immersive visual experience brought to the audience. Yeah, uh, I think I remember that Nova Star, the M Control 4K and Nova Pro UHD Junior mm -hmm. that you support the HDR and the 3D function. Mm -hmm. So now the H series can also support these functions. Yes, you're right at it. Wow, that's awesome. Okay, for sure with the HDR and the 3, uh, 3D function, it can increase the value of the LED display. Mm -hmm. And if I have enough money, 
I will install a LED screen in my house and just lay on the couch and watch movies. Wow, that's <laughs> So okay. now let's move on to the next part and let's talk about monitoring function, which is quite commonly seen among different video controllers. And as you probably know, monitoring through hardware can only cover the output side. Yeah. Well, IP monitoring can do an overall monitoring. Correct. But the thing is, most of the manufacturers do either the former or the latter. Rarely someone puts both in one piece of equipment. But right now, right here, it happens on our H series. Okay, so being able to see real-time image of the input and output sources in real-time is indeed a very considered function, so which is very convenient for the operators. Yes, exactly. And now let's talk about EDID. As we all know, user-defined resolution is necessary for some ultra-long screens, but some suppliers don't support that. Our H-series can, however, do a great job in the EDID setting especially when the screen is ultra long, just as the one you've seen on the screen. Okay, thank you, Simon. You shared a lot of information and I also learned a lot too. And I remember uh, at the beginning of the presentation, uh, it seems you have three family members in the H series, like the H2, yep. H5, and yes. H9. So shall we take a look about the product uh, appearance and you can give us a short explanation about some hardware parameters. Cool. Sure, my pleasure. So the three main members of the H family are H2, H5, and H9, okay. which are given different names depending on their own rack mount height, ranging from two units over five units to nine units. The greatest and user-friendliest advantage of H series is that it's modularly designed. Yeah, I like it very much. So you can decide yourself how many daughter cards you want according to your actual need. As you can see in this chart, the maximum input and output cards also vary consistently with the size of the equipment itself. For example, H2 supports three input cards at most, while H5 or H9 supports up to 10. H2 supports two output cards to the maximum, while H5, uh, 3 and H9, 5 respectively. And now let's go through them one by one. Okay, let's see. So firstly, here in this picture, you can see H2's uh, rear panel. On the left are three input daughter cards. One is replaceable with a monitoring daughter card. On the right, uh, two output cards. H5 supports 10 input daughter cards on the left and three output daughter cards on the right. And you can spot that here on the H5, the monitoring card doesn't share a common card slot with input card anymore. Same with the H9, the monitoring card slot is also fixed on H9 quite at the edge of the right. Well, I'd suggest let's take a closer look at the H9 physically. 10 input cards and 5 output respectively set on the left and the right. And here on the bottom left, uh, power supply are set. One master and one for backup. And here on the top, uh, on the bottom right, there is a control card. And as I mentioned, all of the daughter cards are modularized, which means you can plug in or pull out any one of the daughter cards whenever you want. Let me show you how to do this. For example, this one. Turn the both screw anti-clockwise till they pop out, so that you can pull them out. And on the contrary, if you want to plug in, you're supposed to plug the card to the end and then press the screws a little bit before turning them clockwise. I really like the head integrity feature because it can save time, uh, save time for configure the screen and it can save space mm -hmm. to set up. And I also want to say thank you to the modular designers, whoever it is, because you have made a great contribution for this industry. And also for the command center control interface, that one yeah. is also very necessary because for the customers just like me, sometimes we do not use your Novastar software. Uh, we will use a protocol to control our device directly. So this is also a very good design. And Simon, so yeah. which kind of input and output card and H-series support now? Well, I'll let you know in the following presentation. 
Okay, let's see it. So on this page, we can see there are eight types of input cards for both analog and for digital signals. And for analog signals, we've got CVBS, VGA, and for digital signals, we've got DP, DVI, HDMI, or SDI. And there is uh, one particular type of input card, the RJ45 IP camera card. And now let's have a look at the output cards. There are altogether three types of output cards. Well, the first one is 16 RJ45 output ports plus two fiber uh, output port sending card. Okay, so this one is for the long distance transmission. Yes, exactly. Okay. And the second type, there are 20 Ethernet cable output ports. And for the th third type, the preview monitoring card is also available. And I think diagrams would help us make a little bit of summary more explicitly. Look at this one. Various input sources are supported. Overall monitoring for both input and output integrated. Yep. Control area user-friendly designed and altogether it makes no longer a matter for H-Series to load a super large screen. And from the rear panel, you can see how the whole system works more distinctly. Video sources to the input daughter card, control command from your control computer, yep. solution for monitoring available either through IP or HDMI monitor. And finally, when the equipment is powered on and the H5 is ready to load an 8K screen. Well, cool. And Simon do have some real client case to share with us because I think the real cases uh, scenarios will attract us more. Yes, of course, you know me well and the cases are already arranged. For example, this is a five screen project in a grand hall in Shanghai. Traditionally, we gotta use five sending cards and another splicer that has five DVI output ports for drawing the images as a whole. But now one piece of H5 can handle this. Input sources can be switched to where you want, so the multiple layers that you would like to open. Besides, H-Series is also good at handling such ultra-long screens by which the images are well synchronized, the resolution of H9 well set through EDID, and the large loading capacity can hear all show their brilliant talents. Wow, okay, thank you so much. Seven, I think I know everything now. What about you guys? 